The Sixers lost game seven to the Atlanta Hawks, 103-96. Embiid was great again, 31 points, 11 rebounds. He did have eight turnovers. One was really embarrassing in 45 seconds ago, but uh, you look at this game as a whole, and it's hard not to put most of the blame on the shoulders of one Ben Simmons. Uh, just five fourth quarters in a row without a single field goal attempt. Uh, I, there's not much you can say about him. He took four attempts the entire game, was two for four. He did have eight rebounds and 13 assists, but he just he just didn't shoot. And I think the worst one, he, he had a very key moment where he had a very easy dunk in front of him and he elected the pass instead. And I think, to me, he just seemed afraid. He just seemed to be afraid to be on offense. And for someone who's an all-star and someone who's supposed to be your number two, number one B guy, not great. So quickly, I'll go to you. What 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 do you do with what do you do with Simmons at this point? What do you do? Um, you got to get him out of there. I mean, he's there's obviously just it's not a fit. It's not a good fit. Uh, he, his teammates Embiid was, you know, kind of trying to be a little bit, let's say, vague about who he was talking about in his post game conference, but he's clearly saying that Ben Simmons and his inability to put the ball in the basket when there's literally no one around him and he's six foot 10 and he can just literally just put the ball in the basket, but instead he passes. Um, that's very frustrating as a teammate to see, but um, once you have your teammates throwing you under the bus, it's probably, it's probably the end of that relationship. So um, it's not like he's just completely unable or unable to score or to be, you know, a productive uh, second guy maybe on a team it's just that it's severely not working in Philly um, we've seen him have monster games like he had in Utah I believe earlier this year where he scored 40 uh, on Rudy Gobert um, who's one of the best defenders in the league and you know that's that's just definitely something that it's not necessarily a flash in the pan I'm sure he can recreate that um, but I think a, a definitely a different situation would be beneficial for him, whether that's going to Minnesota where he could team up with uh, KT and uh, Anthony Edwards or, um, you know, there's other options, but it's just that he really needs to get out of Philly. I think it's one, a confidence thing with him. You really saw after game five, he just was, he, there's just no, no swagger about him. He just didn't really have that, competitive edge that you need uh in the playoffs and it was clear that it was just, he was just devoid of, of any really like ability that that, that just like mob mentality kind of like it was just nowhere to be seen anywhere near like near the court where he was so he's got to get that confidence back um and I think that you know leaving would certainly help that for him yeah, I couldn't agree more. You said Joel Embiid threw him under the bus. His own coach also kind of threw him under the bus. They asked uh, Doc Rivers if they thought that Ben Simmons could be a point guard on a championship team, and his response was, I don't know. That's pretty tough for your coach to say about you. I mean, it was honest, but, uh, yeah, you, you also mentioned some good things. I, as far as his fit in Philly, this is a team that isn't built for someone who isn't going to score. You know, they, their best player is – your best player is in your front court. You can't rely – on your seven footer to be the guy who creates space and takes threes. And that's what they're having to do with how, how lacking Ben Simmons has been on the offensive front. So I agree. I, I, I he, there's no way he can stay in Philly. I mean, if anything, the fans are going to absolutely drive him out because I, the things I've seen on social media <laughs> the past 48 hours have been insane, but I want to throw it to Thomas because Thomas Aiello, because I know you always have hot takes on where, players should end up, especially players who just played so poorly. So I'd love to hear your opinion on what you think the best move is for Philly and also just where you think Simmons is going to end up. Okay, so before I tell you where I think he should go, Ben Simmons, as talented as he is, and he does a lot of things well, I call him the six foot ten Rondo. I'm sure that that might resonate with you guys a little bit. I'm sure that you can kind of see that he is a 6'10 Rondo. Ben Simmons is, is spoiled. <laughs> he's spoiled in the sense, let, hold on. He's spoiled in the sense that he had all of this aura coming out of him, high school and college, like, oh, this guy, he's going to save the Sixers. He's going to be the number one pick. He's going to rookie of the year, the, the, this, that, all, all-star, Magic Johnson, Scottie Pippen type player. You can't do that. You, you guys can't, people can't do that. Okay. I think 
setting such a bar is so unrealistic for a player like Ben Simmons, who plays nothing like those two, like Pippen or Magic at all. He plays nothing like that. The second part is Ben Simmons, who wants it? Who, who, who the hell is going to take a chance on this guy? Now, Quiggs, you said Minnesota. You read my mind because the only trade that I could come up with on my famous NBA trade machine is literally swapping him for D'Angelo Russell and you give him give uh, Philadelphia a pick, some kind of pick. Give him something. The problem is how motivated is Ben Simmons going to be? That's the real issue. I know that I called him spoiled because the expectations were too high and he's kind of – lollygagged, eh, like I'm Ben Simmons. Uh, no, dude, you got to show up and you got to actually play and lead the Sixers, okay? Joel Embiid is, is severely depending on you to give him the ball to actually score, okay? Tobias Harris, who can't run or jump well, is dependent on you to give him catch and shoot threes. And so is pretty much the rest of how this Philly team is constructed. So Ben Simmons alone is the sole creator who somehow doesn't have a jump shot. At least Rondo uh, could shoot and try to keep people honest. Like Joe Kim Noah couldn't shoot to save his life either with that, th this, this form. And believe me, as a Knicks fan and someone who has also, for some reason, just observed the Bulls a lot, you know, Joe Kim Noah at least tried to do something on the offensive end. Ben Simmons doesn't want to do anything on that end. He likes playing his defense and running and getting his little dunks. But come down to it. If you can't stay on the, play, on the floor in the playoff game, not let alone shoot outside of seven feet, I, you're in trouble. And I don't know where he goes. I mean, Minnesota, that's the only one. Maybe Indiana, if you can salvage, like, Malcolm Brogdon and a pick out of that. I mean, I don't know. Indiana's in a weird, like, purgatory state at the moment. Maybe they're going to blow it up. We don't know. So I guess you could try that. But I don't know, man. Ben Simmons just – wow. <laughs> wow, wow. I – it's like I, I've just run out of stuff to say about this guy because every year it's the same goddamn thing. I, I don't know. Ben Simmons, he frustrates me. Okay, he frustrates me. See, that's the thing. Like, I can think of places where he would want to go, where he might fit in, but I can't think of a team that would want him at this point. I mean, he, he's got him. wants him? Like, it, at first it was, it was a joke. He couldn't shoot threes. Then he couldn't shoot, shoot free throws. Now he just won't shoot at all. You look at his past three postseasons – he averaged 16 points per game the next season, 14, then 12. And then in this last series, he averaged 9.9 a game, 9.9 .9 points per game. And he is an all-star and you just, you can't add that. So, you know, I would, before this episode, I was trying to think of like you both were trying to think of teams that he could end up on. And I was like Toronto maybe, but I, if I'm Toronto, I'm not even, I'm not, who am I giving up for that? And Portland, definitely not Dame. Am I, am I giving up CJ McCollum? Like, no, I, I don't think it's even worth it there. I, you know, I was thinking Charlotte, Dallas, I think he'd be good with Luka because he wouldn't have to score and they need defensive help. But again, who are you going to give up from? Who wants to deal with him at this point? So I, 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 don't, I don't really like talking about him this much because it is such an over-talked about issue. But it, it was just, it's hard not to put a lot of the blame on him, especially when you've had a front office that has done everything they can to bring in talent around him. You know, the Jimmy Butler move, the Tobias Harris move, swapping out Josh Richardson for Seth Curry getting Danny Green. They just keep rotating people around Embiid and Simmons. And clearly, Joel Embiid is not the problem. It has to be Ben Simmons. So, you know, I, I think that's going to be uh, Philadelphia's number one priority going, going into the offseason. Maybe they'll also look to get some front court help behind uh, Embiid, but that's a whole other conversation that I'm sure we'll get into over the summer.